Hey guys, Thing Fishy here and welcome to the final main boss parry guide of the series. Today we're going to look at the final two bosses of Elden Ring, Radagon of the Golden Order and the Elden Beast. Now despite how controller shatteringly tough this fight can be, it's good news on the parry front. Not only is pretty much every hammer attack from Radagon parryable, but Radagon is actually one of the easier bosses to parry in the whole game in my opinion. Throughout this series we've seen many attacks from other Elden Ring bosses that need to be anticipated and parried a split second before they actually start happening. But with Radagon, most of his attacks need to be parried as his swing is already underway. Almost reminding me of a traditional DS1 parry. But as I just said, this certainly doesn't make this an easy fight, so before we get started, I'd recommend that you go into this fight with the Halig Drake Talisman Plus 2 equipped and have a secondary weapon in your main hand equipped with Bloodhound Step. I'd also recommend any weapon that deals fire damage, as it's basically the only weakness that these guys have. If you find this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more Soulsborne tutorials. If you'd like to come and watch me figure all this stuff out live, give me a follow on my Twitch channel. Right, let's get to it. So first off, you want to do all of your buffing outside the gate. Radagon's AI takes a few seconds to kick in when you enter the fight. This means that you can run straight up to him and get some free attacks in. How many will depend on what weapon you're using. So now for the parry timings. First up we have the horizontal swing. You want to parry here as the hammer is at the very top of its swing. Next we have the AOE overhead. You want to parry this here when you see his body rotate and his weapons start moving towards you. For the backhand swing, the timing is here again when you see the weapon begin to move towards you. The upswing can be parried by inputting here when the weapon is at its furthest point away from you. Now we have the 360 degree backhand. You want to parry here when his weapon is right above his head. For this distance closing charging swing, you want to parry just as his body begins to move forward towards you. Now these two attacks are commonly seen together after he does this AOE grid attack. Roll the projectile at the top of his jump and then back away from him to avoid the AOE. Now because he will sometimes do the charging swing very close to the AOE, which you can get caught by, I would recommend dodging this and then parrying the follow up which is the 360 backswing. Now for the two grab attacks. The first can be easily dodged by rolling when his hand is fully raised. Now the second one is absolutely devastating and can be a one shot at some levels. It's also one of the roll catchiest attacks in the game, it's daring you to roll too early. There's no real visual cue for dodging this, you have to just learn the timing and leave it till the last possible moment before inputting. The AOE stomp is a really tricky one, there isn't a good visual cue for this, you just have to wait until the last possible second before rolling. The jumping AOE is a really solid opportunity to get some damage in. Roll this just as you start to see him descend, and then start attacking him while he recovers. In his phase 2, Radagon gains a lot of new projectile attacks. Roll this fast one as you see his hand cover his face and jump the spear attack at the highest point in his jump. You then want to back away from the spears so you don't get caught by their following explosion. The other attack in phase 2 that's hard to deal with is his teleport attack. Now this is the way to think of it, as an attack. When you see him disappear, be ready to roll a moment later to avoid the AOE. This is really difficult at first but you will get the timing down with practice. Probably the hardest move to dodge in this fight is his scripted triple slam attack. He'll do this at around 30% health. The optimal strategy that I found for this is to roll forward towards him for the first one, 
then do a jumping attack soon after to dodge and punish the quicker second attack, then lock off and run around him to misdirect the last slam, then attack during his recovery. You don't want to stay too close to him, otherwise he'll track you and hit you. So maintain a little distance as you run around him. With all of this down, you'll soon start making it to the real fight, the battle with Elden Beast. When Radicon dies, use the few seconds of respite you're given here to heal, buff and unequip your buckler. The opening of the Elden Beast fight is completely scripted. As soon as the cutscene ends, you want to run round to the back of him and do your highest DPS attack. You can actually attack his weak spot right at the start here, but it's a little more risky. He'll then swing and hit you with the horizontal swing, which you can dodge by rolling here as the sword appears to the right of him. Now, the best general advice I can give for learning this fight is to first spend a few minutes keeping your distance from him and learning to dodge his ranged attacks. Since the Elden Beast fight is all about closing the gap to him after he swims away, you really want to master these attacks so you can always close the distance and keep your heals for the harder close range attacks. Both the mist and the raining projectiles can be dodged by just sprinting sideways. The 1-2-3 combo is all about rhythm. You may wish to count these attacks out loud in order to learn them. The first two are quite quick and then the second two are more delayed. This attack is a great opportunity to close the distance to him because you can roll through every single attack. So mastering the timing will give you plenty of opportunity to punish through the fight. The lunging stab is another great opportunity to punish. Roll here when you see the beast's neck dip and run straight in and attack the weak spot on his front. The explosion attack is easy to dodge by just running away from him to the right as soon as you see it start. For the ring attack, you want to turn 180 degrees away from him and sprint. Jump over the ring and stop shortly afterwards, then start swinging. He'll appear right on top of you and you can get some cheeky hits in. The double ring attack he does in phase two is exactly the same. This one, two, three combo starting with the backhand is another great opportunity for damage. Dodge the first just like a regular attack by rolling into him. Dodge the second as you see his body coming towards you and then just attack that weak spot. The third attack will miss you from here every time. Run away from the plunge AOE as soon as you see it start. And for this incredibly cool looking flying attack, roll as you see his sword pass his head in the air. Now for the most annoying attack in this fight and arguably the entire game, Elden Stars. The reason this attack is so annoying is how bad it is for you in this fight depends entirely on what attacks he combines it with while you're trying to avoid it. My strategy for Elden Stars is to swap to my right hand weapon and spam Bloodhound Step. The further away from him you are when you start doing this, the better. So running away when you first see it start will make this consistent. But even if you're at close range like I am here, Bloodhound stepping through it will usually result in survivable damage. But do be prepared to get memed by this attack. Sometimes it just feels unavoidable. And that's it. How to parry Radagon and Elden Beast. If you've enjoyed this video, do give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more Souls content. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.